First question is from Jay Hothi. Is there a different way to train for wide lats versus thick lats? Uh, width versus wide thickness. Versus thick. I think a better way to word that question would be uh, train for a wide back or a thick back. Yeah, you're right. I would than, agree. Then say thick lats or wide lats. Yeah, because the because lats. That's not going to change. No, the lats grow and they shrink, right? So if they grow, they're going to get thicker and wider. Right. But when you're looking at back width, you're typically talking about the lats. So if you were to look at like an anatomy chart of the back, the lats kind of come up and attach up in the, the top of the arms and they come all the way down and, and attach up along the spine. And they're these really big kind of wing muscles that are, you know, they kind of, they, they give you the width look. Uh, right, because when you think like rhomboids or erector spinae would be That's more what's going to give you a thick back. Yeah, right. rhomboids, yes. mid trapezius, erector spinae. That's what's going to give you that kind of thick looking like three-dimensional so yeah. I, I like this question though because uh, i remember the 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 bro way of explaining this like i had buddies that would train like this where uh they would do all their lat exercises narrow grip to because they were in theory were trying to make their lats thicker that day yeah. or they would go all wide grip yeah, because they're trying to go yeah. width and the way this is worded is probably somebody who's been either told this or is thinking this yeah. and i think that's just the wrong way to look at it it's like developing your lats 100 percent is is going to make you wider looking right because right. The, the lats run on the side of you like that the muscles that i think will give you more of a thicker back look would be attacking things like your rhomboids, your traps, your rectus spinae. Those are the th muscles that I think are going to give you more depth. To yeah. Your so uh, typically, uh, anything that's like a pull up, a pull down, you're going to you're going to hit the lats much more directly. Things like rows still work the lats, but you're going to get more of those mid back muscles. Deadlifts, right? Lots of those mid back muscles, lots of the erector spinae. And it's funny through the years, I now am able to really tell. Um, with oh, decent accuracy, if someone does a lot of rows and deadlifts versus if someone does lots mm. of pull-ups. And yeah. you can see it in their back. You really can. I remember years ago, there was this guy that would come into the gym, and he was just a pull-up machine. He would just, And he had these really wide back with these kind of hanging lats, but he did lack some of that thickness. Wings. Yeah, he, had that, he did lack some of that upper back thickness. Then there was these power lifters that I, that I knew that lacked the, the width, from the lat, but they had such thick, deep looking backs. Yeah. So really for full development, you want to kind of do all of it. You want to do all of those Well, that things. was the biggest thing that I saw into Justin's point about director Spinet was, man, when I, uh, when you guys pushed me to lift heavy deadlifts, I had never done that in my life. Mm -hmm. Like I deadlifted, but not heavy, like not singles, doubles, triples, lifting, or even under five reps. It was always something I did lightweight. I did them at the end of workouts. I was never trying to push the weight with deadlifts. And I remember, I and I got to go back because I know you've re referenced it, Sal, before. In the oh, that podcast. before that picture, before and after is so telling. Yeah. And it all the only difference is literally, I and I actually threw out like all other back exercises. All I did was deadlift, and so to see the difference. Now, you got to remember that I got 15 years plus of before that of doing all kinds of lat pull down and pull ups and mm -hmm. all the traditional type of you know lat and back exercises. The only thing I wasn't doing was really focusing on deadlifting and what that could do for my back. It's also why I'm so defensive when I see the trainers that try and shit on deadlifting as a back exercise because nothing gave my back a fuller, thicker, better look mm -hmm. than that. I mean, and that was one of my early critiques from judging was when the first judge saw me, it was like, oh, you could improve your back thickness. And I went after deadlifting and it totally changed the, the look of my back. Yeah, it's funny. Sure. When you see like strength athletes, like power lifters, make the transition to bodybuilding, you often will see the issue of back width. So they, they oftentimes have to then focus on really getting the lats developed, but they don't lack thickness. Yeah. They've got really, really thick backs. Oh, our buddy deadlift. Ben Pollock is a great example yes. of that. I mean, he is just a... Thick. Uh, yeah. Thick. Super. But you can see that he's having to work on the width to yeah. bring that kind of bodybuilding, you know, that, that flared lat look or whatever. Yeah. So you got to do them both. Uh, but as far as the lats are concerned, you develop them or you don't. And when you develop them, they'll get wider and thicker. But you want that mid back, that, that, you know, canal down the spine where, it, you know, dips in because everything's real thick. Deadlift oh, and row. That's yeah, what's that comes do. with that heavy lifting where you're just in that isometric contraction of stabilizing your spine. Yeah. And, I mean, since, and, and now that since we're on the topic, if you want that that yoke where it's like the traps and upper back, like do your your high pulls, your cleans, mm -hmm. your farmer heavy walks, carries. Yep. Oh yeah, you ever like you ever run into like a, a an athlete that does just lots of 
cleans and high poles. Uh, and they're not really focused on aesthetics. They're just trying to focus on yep. getting really good at cleans and high poles. Well, and what do they always do. have? Yep. Super thick, like upper kind of trap. Huge traps. Yeah. And, and I noticed heck. that from training with Justin. We trained when we, I was training with him or because we were building the app while I was also competing. And I would get workouts in with him and I would do a cleans the presses. So, and I remember I went a good solid, I would say a good solid six months to a year of no more traditional shoulder presses. Anytime I shoulder press, I cleaned the press and got up to a point where I was, I was trying to catch up to Justin, what he was, what he was doing weight wise. Mm. And I remember- Were you able to get close to him or what? <laughs> I got close. I don't think I was doing the same weight as he yeah, could do. Justin's a- yeah, with that. but I, I do. What I did notice was again because I'm getting you know judged and I see pictures and I'm critiquing my physique like crazy during this time in my life. Uh, was the upper back development from that was an, incredible and shoulders too. It blew my shoulders up, blew mm -hmm. my traps up. Just a great, great movement for the upper back. Yeah, it's got to be the one area of the body that if you develop it really well and balanced, it gives you this overall appearance of strength. I think some of that has yeah. to do too with it. it those exercises promote you pulling your shoulders back mm -hmm. and better posture. So at least I feel that way. Like if you get that upper back that's thick like that, not only are you standing upright with good posture, then your T-shirt well, kind of hangs the, off so you yeah. can see that this person's all developed up there. And the fast twitch movement, uh, you know, getting that kind of stimulus is, is that too. something that people lack a lot in their training. Uh, so to, to be able to kind of get that from some of these like power lifting, what a great lifting. point. When does anybody do an explosive exercise for your shoulders or for your upper back? Like you just rarely ever see that as an explosive type of movement yeah. that you train. I think that's part of it. I think it's good to point that out actually, Justin, because I think that's half of why I saw such great benefit from doing that was I never did that. Yeah. So of course it's, yeah, that exercise is great for that. But if you do it all the time, obviously the, the thing that yeah. we always talk about, the, the exercise you never do is probably the most yeah. And then beneficial. the other thing too is from a functional standpoint, you can't always judge a book by its cover, obviously, but I know the people that I would, when I would grapple, the people that I could look at and tell, like that's a strong person, had a well-developed back and hips. Like everything else didn't matter. If I had mm -hmm. a well-developed back and hips. You know they're strong. You know that they're strong. You tend to see that in, in athletes.